Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and every month here on the channel, Plex does a sponsored video where we do a deep dive into one of the features of their uh, very feature-rich media serving application. We've covered a lot of Plex in the past. You can see my full playlist linked down below, but today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new feature, which is live TV. So a few weeks ago, a few months ago now, uh, they announced the Plex DVR that allows you to record live television, but you couldn't watch it live. After the recordings were done, obviously, you could then uh, stream it to your devices. Now you can actually watch the live TV broadcasts as they're happening, uh, both in your home, but also on the road. So if you take a trip somewhere and you've got your phone with you, you can actually stream live TV from your house to your phone using the Plex Media Server and all of its transcoding capabilities. We're going to be exploring this in detail here in just a second. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they do not direct the content you're about to see, nor do they review it before it is posted. So I have a lot of freedom here to do and say whatever I want. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Uh, we also have a few other things we're going to be talking about in the video here, namely the NVIDIA Shield TV. Now, I bought this one, but NVIDIA has sent one one or two to the channel in the past for different videos we've done on this product. And we're also going to be talking about the HD Home Run Tuner that I've got in the closet over there that makes all of this happen. Uh, that one I bought, however, they are a sponsor here on the channel from time to time and I do some consulting work for them as well. So all those disclosures out of the way, let's take a look and see how it works. All right, so we're gonna jump into things first on the Android TV platform, just cause I got a nice big screen here for you to look at. We're gonna go over here to Live TV. I'm going to go to Program Guide and it's going to pull up the uh, current things on TV. And I can go over here to the Weather Center, for example, and click on Watch. And what'll happen now is it's going to tune the channel and I can start watching this. Now, in order for this to work, uh, you do need to have the DVR already set up inside of your Plex server. And in order for that to work, uh, you need some kind of tuner. So what I'm running on my network is the HD Home Run Prime. It works with a cable card so I can tune my uh, cable TV broadcast to just about anything in my house, including my Plex server. So right now the Plex server is communicating with that HD Home Run tuner. Uh, it is sending data to the Plex server. The Plex server is doing some transcoding to get uh, the video into a more efficient format. And then it is playing back uh, right now in real time on my NVIDIA Shield TV here. Really cool stuff. Uh, it does not yet, though, support time shifting. So uh, right now you can watch things live or set them to record, but you can't uh, do anything with time shifting, pausing, playing, you know, rewinding, or fast forwarding. So you have to kind of wait until uh, that function gets enabled to be able to do that. But what I could do uh, is back out of this menu real quick, set this show to record, and then go back and watch it. But I won't be able to do any rewinding or fast forwarding like you can do on other DVRs. So what they tend to do here with Plex is they uh, roll out features once they get one component polished and ready to go, and then they work on more. So that uh, time shifting will be coming out in the near future. Uh, but what is new here, in addition to the live TV, is that you can actually actually do this DVR stuff uh, from your supported device because before you had to use only the web interface to do that. Uh, now I can set things to record on here. I can also uh, manage my DVR recordings, for example, as well. So I've got two set up here to record in the near future. I could go in here and uh, maybe turn this one off for next week or set some of the other uh, settings that I would normally do on the web interface. I can now do all of that from here. So two very big changes, the one being uh, live television now working and then uh, being able to actually set Get your DVR recordings from your remote device versus having to go into the web interface like you had to do before. Uh, what it's also going to do is start uh, making recommendations based on things that are in your Plex library for things that uh, might be coming up on TV. So you'll be able to find some of your favorite shows automatically through some of their auto artificial intelligence and whatnot. Uh, that was working on the web interface before, but if you primarily watched on a device like this one, you weren't seeing that stuff. Uh, now that will be uh, brought up to you here. So I'm seeing a bunch of recommended stuff, kind of a weird mishmash here based on what everybody in my house watches, but uh, it's beginning to recommend things based on what's in my library and I can set those things to record now. Uh, right from my TV versus having to load up a computer. Now, at the time that I'm recording this video, which is June 1st, 2017, this is not yet supported across all platforms. So right now it works on uh, NVIDIA Shield TV devices running Android TV. It also works on the iPhone and iPad. I'll be showing you how it works on these in a second. It does not yet work though with Android phones or tablets. And I know a lot of you are going to be very disappointed to hear that. They will be uh, implementing that in the next couple of weeks. I'll keep you posted as to when that happens, maybe do a follow-up 
video on it to show you it working on an Android device. Uh, so right now, the only Android device it supports are the TV boxes, and they have to be running the official uh, Android TV interface, not one of those generic boxes. But support for regular Android phones and tablets is coming soon. Uh, the web interface, while it can do the recording functions of the DVR, doesn't yet do live right now. So that will be updated to support live TV. And the Apple TV will also be updated in the near future to support this live television and DVR recording as well. And on the mobile devices, it performs just as well as it did on the TV here. So I can go to the program guide and see uh, what is currently on the air. Maybe we can watch a little American Dad here. So I'll uh, tap on that show and uh, begin live streaming it. There's always a bit of a delay as things start to get transcoded over from the server. Depending on how fast your server is, that will determine how long the wait is. Um, but typically, it isn't too bad here. You can see it now spinning up and uh, getting going here. So there we go. We've got American Dad now uh, streaming live, or at least a commercial now. You can't get rid of the commercials on uh, the live stream here, but uh, we can finish watching that just by closing it out like so and uh, go back to the uh, main menu here. And you can see we also have the ability to work on our recording schedules and all the things that uh, we had on the TV interface we also have here. Now, one of the features that I loved about Plex on the iPad was the ability to jump out of the Plex app while you're playing a video and watch it in a smaller window on top of your other iPad app. It's a feature of the iOS operating system. It works pretty well. And uh, what's cool is that it also works with live broadcasts here on the Plex live TV feature. So if I back out of Plex right now, you can see this live broadcast continues running here on my iPad as I do other things. So I can go in here and uh, browse the web, for example, or load up any other app and do my email and keep that video window active. You can also tuck it away to the side like I just did there. Uh, you can make it larger or smaller. What's funny is that there is a pause button here, and it does seem to work. So there might be some degree of time shifting you can do outside of the app here uh, that you can't do inside of it. I'm not sure how long it'll pause for, but it does seem to be working a little better than uh, the app does because the app doesn't pause at all. And then if you want to jump back to the Plex app, you can just hit that little icon there and you are uh, back in watching it uh, through the app natively once again. Really cool feature on iOS. Now, one of the killer features of Plex has always been the ability to connect to your server remotely and stream your content over the internet to yourself. And this live TV feature works the same way. So what I have done here is uh, logged out of my account and I logged in my NVIDIA Shield box to another Plex server on the other side of the country from me. So I'm on the East Coast here in the US. I'm in Connecticut. I now have access to uh, some broadcasts here out of San Francisco. So let's take a look and see how this works over the internet. So we're going to click on watch here. And what's happening on the other side of the country right now is that there's a Plex server running in a little computer. Uh, it is now communicating with a over the air tuner and we're watching a live broadcast. It's coming in over an antenna in California, uh, yet I am here in Connecticut. Really cool stuff and it seems to be working just fine in high definition. Now you definitely need enough bandwidth for this to work not only on the uh, transmitting side, but also the receiving side. Uh, but there are some adjustments you can make to make this process a little better if you're starting to get some lag and some other things. So let's take a look and see how you might be able to adjust some of those settings. So we're going to take a look at how to set up my iPhone for uh, remote watching. And the reason why I'm picking the iPhone here is because more than likely, this is the device that will give you the most trouble. You're going to be taking it on the road with you. You might have bad Wi-Fi. You might have a really weak cellular connection. So uh, knowing how to set it up on the phone, I think will help you on all other platforms. The settings you're about to see here are set up uh, the same way on TV boxes and other things as well. So on all the mobile devices, typically in the Plex app, you will see a hamburger icon somewhere on your screen. And if you tap on that, it will pull out a uh, menu here of a bunch of options. We're going to go over to settings and then we're going to go to quality. And I'm going to give you a better view of that right now. So what you see here is a couple of different scenarios. The first one says limit cellular data. So if I am not at home and I'm not on Wi-Fi, I'm probably going to be using my uh, Verizon connection and I have a data cap right now. I didn't go over to that unlimited thing yet. So if I use too much data, they charge me more money. So there's a safety net in here that if I do happen to try to watch some live TV, it's going to stream a very uh, compressed video to me so that I'm not eating up too much data. So right now, 0.7 megabits per second, they approximate will be about three hours of watching per gigabyte used, but it's only going to be at 320p. So very low quality video, but it might be good enough if I want to catch some news or something important while I'm on the road without eating up my connection. But you can see here, you can go up to two megabits per second at 720p, or you can disable this limit cellular data feature altogether to give you uh, the quality that you'll see in the next option, which is internet streaming. So if I'm not at home and I'm on the internet, uh, this setting right now, four megabits per second is what I have mine set to. 
Now, my upstream connection here at the house is 10 megabits per second. So more than likely, provided I don't have any real connection issues here at the house, I should be able to stream 720p video over the internet to my phone. I believe that's what we had it set to uh, on the box here when we connected to that server in California. So that's probably going to work pretty well under most scenarios. But if you start seeing some lag and some things not working, uh, you can tune it down here. Maybe you go down to 480p at one and a half megabits per second and you'll have uh, better luck with that. And the last option here is for home streaming. And I've got mine set to use the recommended settings, which means any video smaller than 20 megabits per second uh, will play at the original quality. And I found for the live broadcast, uh, that seems to be working pretty well here for uh, the phone as well. So typically your phone or your tablet is going to be connecting via Wi-Fi. And while we do have some fast Wi-Fi these days, the speed drops off the farther you get away from your access points. So this setting has been a safe one for me and one that I found uh, works fairly well here in the house and has been working just fine uh, streaming locally inside the house with uh, the live TV feature here. So that is the live television feature of Plex. It's part of their DVR that does require the Plex Pass subscription for it to work, but it works exceptionally well. You've got the integration with the Plex transcoding engine, so you can take your phone out wherever you are in the world and watch your home television stations. Likewise, you could uh, have an NVIDIA Shield box on the other side of the world and uh, stream to a TV if you wanted to as well. As more platforms come online with this, I think we'll see uh, more usefulness of this feature. So stay tuned if you are waiting for those other platforms. It probably won't take long for it to get there. Now, there is some gotchas here. One is that FlexPass subscription that you need to get this feature to work. Uh, the other is that it does not support DRM protected content. This is going to be an issue for folks that are uh, streaming from their cable provider. Now where I am, Comcast only encrypts like HBO and Showtime and a few other networks. The rest I can get uh, with my cable card hooked up to my HD Home Run Prime in the other room. Uh, but some cable companies encrypt everything and those uh, cable providers will not work with this because it won't play them back and probably won't for the foreseeable future. So if you are in one of those cable areas, uh, you will need to use an over-the-air antenna to get this to work. Uh, otherwise, your cable networks will not be streamable or recordable uh, with this DVR system. So just bear that in mind. It does support the HD Home Run tuners, as I mentioned. I think those are probably the best bet because you can put them uh, in a portion of the house where you've got the best signal reception from an antenna, and then you can run your, your data network over to it, and then everything in the house can get access to those broadcasts over your uh, Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Uh, but if you want to, you can now get a USB antenna and some of those antennas actually work with the NVIDIA Shield. So if you're using your Shield as a Plex server, uh, you can get one of those compatible tuners, plug it into the USB port, and it can uh, receive over-the-air broadcast provided you've got a decent enough signal for it. So that's a pretty cool new feature that uh, they've also added with this update. My recommendation for a Plex server is probably an i5 or an i7 uh, PC, just so you can do that transcoding fast enough and you're not going to get bogged down when, uh, for example, people might be playing games on your stream or your, your uh, NVIDIA Shield while you're away or something. So uh, I would say go for the PC and you'll probably want something with some horsepower to do some transcoding. I don't think this is yet working on NAS devices yet. So I think the one we looked at uh, a little while ago from WD had the ability to run a pretty decent Plex server, but I don't think it can handle the DVR just yet. So your probably only options right now are uh, the NVIDIA Shield here or a PC running uh, Mac or Windows. So that will do it for live TV on Plex. Leave your questions and comments down below, and I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of follow-ups of this in the near future. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger, Brian Miller, Mr. Morse, and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.